Welcome to the overview of the TR Settlement Agreement, Systems of Care, and an introduction to the Wraparound with Intensive Services Program Model, also known as WISE. Let's begin with an overview of the TR Settlement Agreement. In November 2009, a Medicaid class action lawsuit was filed against the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services, also known as DSHS, and later included the Health Care Authority as well. It is based on federal EPSDT laws, which is also known as Early and Periodic Screening, Diagnoses, and Treatment. It requires states to provide mental health services and treatment to children and youth who need them, even if the services have not been provided in the past. DSHS looked to Washington State families and youth and nationally for feedback and guidance. After several years of negotiations, both sides agreed on a plan that they believe will put them in compliance with the laws and, most importantly, work for youth and families in Washington. The federal court approved the settlement agreement on December 19, 2013. The goal of the settlement agreement is to develop a system that provides intensive mental health services in home and community settings that work for Medicaid-eligible youth up to 21 years of age. Through the settlement agreement, the state is committed to implementing WISE within every county of the state by June 2018. For more information on the TR Settlement Agreement, please visit the website listed on the screen. Within the settlement agreement, the state committed to operating its Medicaid-funded mental health system that delivers services to youth in a manner consistent with principles adapted from nationally recognized systems of care efforts. These principles will be further discussed in Module 2. What is Systems of Care? Systems of Care is a comprehensive spectrum of mental health and other necessary services, which are organized into a coordinated network to meet the multiple and changing needs of children and their families. There are three core values of Systems of Care that are important to mention. These values are 1. The system of care should be child-centered and family-focused, with the needs of the child and family dictating the types and mix of services provided. 2. The system of care should be community-based, with the locus of services as well as management and decision-making responsibility resting at the community level. 3. The system of care should be culturally competent, with agencies, programs, and services that are responsive to the cultural, racial, and ethnic differences of the populations they serve. These values are reflected in the Washington State Children's Behavior Health Principles. Please visit the web link noted on screen for more Systems of Care or SOC details, including the national definition, core values, and principles. Washington has six System of Care goals it is working towards. They are 1. Infuse system of care values in all child serving systems. Two, expand and sustain effective leadership roles for families, youth, and system partners. Three, establish an appropriate array of services and resources statewide, including home and community based services. Four, develop and strengthen a workforce that will operationalize system of care values. Five, Build a strong data management system to inform decision-making and track outcomes. Six, develop sustainable financing and align funding to ensure services are seamless for children, youth, and families. WISE is intended to operationalize the system of care values and service delivery to a specific class of children, youth, and their families with complex behavioral health needs. It does this by providing one, a structured planning process, two, care coordination, three, intensive services, four, cross-system care plan, five, collaboration. Within the WISE program model, there are three main service categories that have to be provided to each youth and family participating in WISE. They are, 1. Intensive Care Coordination 2. Intensive Services Provided in the Home and Community 3. 
24-7 crisis intervention and stabilization services. Each service category has a specific function. Let's take a closer look at each service category and function. Intensive care coordination includes facilitating assessment, care planning, coordination of services, and monitoring of services and supports. Intensive care coordination is a critical component of WISE because it provides a single point of accountability for ensuring that medically necessary services are accessed, coordinated, and delivered in a strength-based, individualized, family and youth-driven, and culturally and linguistically relevant manner. Services and supports that are guided by the needs of the youth. Facilitation of a collaborative relationship among a youth, his or her family, and involved child serving systems. Support to the youth's family in meeting their youth's needs. A care planning process that organizes and matches care across providers and child serving systems to allow the youth to be served in their home and community and facilitated development of an individual's care planning team. Teaming is a process that brings together individuals agreed upon by the child and family who are committed to them through informal, formal, and community support and service relationships. It facilitates cross-system involvement and or a formal child and family team where medically necessary. Without care coordination, families have multiple plans. When one system asks families for multiple things, that may seem reasonable. However, when multiple systems are asking multiple things from families, that leads to youth and families feeling confused and disempowered, waste, duplication, competing agendas. Moving to collaborative coordination allows for one youth and family plan that addresses all system needs. The second service category of the WISE program model is intensive services or direct services. Direct services are delivered according to an individualized service plan coordinated with the cross-system care plan. The services provided are based on the individual needs of the youth and family and should be mutually agreed upon by the child and family team. They should be individualized, strength-based interventions designed to correct or ameliorate mental health symptoms that interfere with the youth's functioning. The agreed upon interventions are aimed at, one, promoting health and wellness, two, helping the youth build skills necessary for successful functioning in the home and community, and three, improving the family's ability to help the youth successfully function in the home and community. WISE practitioners, a term used to describe the collection of WISE certified staff roles required for each team, which are the care coordinator, the family partner and or youth partner, and the mental health clinician. They provide these services in locations and at times that work best for the youth and family so that the youth has an opportunity to work towards identified goals and objectives in a natural setting. This includes providing services in the family home, and on evenings and weekends. Direct services include, but are not limited to, educating the youth's family about the mental health challenges the youth is experiencing and how to effectively support the youth. In-home functional behavioral assessment, behavior management, including developing and implementing a behavioral plan with positive behavioral supports, modeling for the youth's family and others how to implement behavioral strategies, and in-home behavioral aides who assist in implementing the behavior plan, monitor its effectiveness, and report on the plan's effectiveness to clinical professionals. Lastly, therapeutic services delivered in the youth's home or community including, but not limited to, therapeutic interventions such as individual and or family therapy and evidence research-based practices, such as trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, multi-systemic therapy, and functional family therapy. These services are designed to improve self-care by addressing behaviors and social skills deficits that interfere with the daily living task and to avoid exploitation by others. Improve self-management of symptoms, including self-administration of medications. Improve social functioning by addressing social skill deficits and anger management. 
reduce negative effects of past trauma using evidence research-based approaches. Reduce negative impact of mental health symptoms such as depression and anxiety symptoms through use of evidence research-based approaches. Support the development and maintenance of social support networks and the use of community resources. Support employment objectives by identifying and addressing behaviors or symptoms that interfere with seeking and maintaining a job. Support educational objectives through identifying and addressing behaviors or symptoms that interfere with succeeding in an academic program in the community. Lastly, support independent living objectives by identifying and addressing behaviors or symptoms that interfere with seeking and maintaining housing and living independently. The third service category and its specific function is 24-7 mobile crisis intervention and stabilization services. Crisis services include crisis planning and prevention services, telephone support, as well as face-to-face -face interventions that support the youth in the community. The function of this service component is to plan ahead in an effort to minimize the occurrence and severity of crisis and ensure safety. If a crisis does arise, individuals who know the youth and family's needs and circumstances, as well as their current crisis plan, are available to respond to the crisis episode 24-7, 365 days a year. These individuals are preferably drawn from the team. More about the crisis and safety planning will be discussed in a future module. Now that you have heard a little about the services WISE provides and the model it uses to provide these services, let's recap the main difference about WISE and other more traditional ways of providing services. First is its primary settings. WISE services are not intended to be facility-based. Instead, WISE services are provided in the home and in the community locations, and at times in locations that ensure meaningful participation of family members, youth, and natural supports. WISE is targeted to youth and families with intensive and complex mental health needs. Assessment, treatment, and support services are provided in the youth and family's natural setting where needs and challenges present themselves, such as the home, school, and community. Second, it's focused on youth and family voice, utilizing a strength-based approach. Family and youth voice choice and preferences are intentionally invited and prioritized during all phases of the process, including planning, delivery, transition, and evaluation of services. Supports and services are delivered in a way that honors the value of family-driven and youth-guided care. Services and supports are planned and delivered in a way that identifies, builds on, and enhances the capabilities, knowledge, skills, and assets of the youth and family their community, and other team members. Third, it provides flexible and creative services. WISE is intended to be provided in creative and flexible ways. Those served through WISE tend to come into services with complex needs and involved histories. This WISE approach must provide support differently, as many of the youth and families served have found traditional behavioral health care unable to meet their behavioral health needs. Others remain at risk of more restrictive care in spite of having received effective traditional mental health services. This circumstance requires the WISE team to deliver purposeful support without delay with a take action mentality, moving from a compliance practice model to a needs-driven intensive and flexible service provision approach. Fourth, it requires certified peer counselors, family partners, and or youth partners as a key member or members on each team. Family partners and youth partners who have lived experience must be meaningfully involved in the provision of WISE. The family partner and or youth partner must be an equal team member with the care coordinator and mental health clinician. The youth partner and or family partner meet with the youth and or family on a regular basis to provide support in addressing the needs of the youth and family as defined in the cross-system care plan. Youth partners and family partners should be educated in how to utilize the child and adolescent needs and strength assessment results, also known as the CANS, to support and educate the youth and family and are encouraged to be certified in CANS. The WISE model of care is purposeful and goal-oriented. It has a collaborative infrastructure, allows for creative process, and is guided by principles. 
We believe that WISE will assist youth and families in moving toward 1. Increased optimism and hope that a better life is possible. 2. An enhanced sense of the power gained by family members to influence the direction, quality, and outcomes of their lives. 3. Increased clarity regarding realistic possibilities for a better life. 4. The development of a realistic family vision, as evidenced by the family's ability to create statements which accurately reflect the life they prefer and believe is possible. Thank you for participating in the TR Settlement Agreement, System of Care, and WISE Overview Module. In the next module, we will take a closer look at the 10 Children's Behavioral Health Principles mentioned in this module.